Good luck. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm Nima, CEO and co-founder of Oasis Now, and we are a clinical trial recruitment and real-world evidence platform. We are the only party who can actually utilize electronic health records to identify patients for clinical trials. And that's thanks to our patient-first, privacy-by-design, and AI-enabled approach. But why are we doing this? Well, it starts with a personal story of my mom. She's a chronic disease patient. She didn't have access to medicine for years and her doctors didn't have time to constantly be on the search for new medicine or clinical trials for her. So to me, as a computer science nerd, I could only see the technical problem that needs solving. So I set out to build one for my mom. And along the way, I met my amazing co-founder who experienced this data problem from the point of view of a researcher. She was working at one of the most renowned medical centers worldwide, working on Alzheimer's research, but she didn't have access to patient data to actually do her research. So our joint frustration towards this problem basically set us on the path of going to tackle this problem for the rest of our lives. And we are starting at the largest bottleneck of healthcare and life science, which is clinical trials. 85% of clinical trials are canceled or delayed. 85%. And it's costing pharma upwards of 8 million of euros per day that these trials are delayed. And for trial sites, the hospitals running these trials, it's an operational nightmare. Two thirds of them fail to meet the original recruitment timelines. It's taking them average 13 months to find patients from their own databases. So it's clearly a big data problem. Why is that? It's because 80% of clinical data is unstructured. It's messy. So no algorithms so far have been able to actually query and utilize that data. As you and I know, large language models are here for rescue. We can now finally, for the first time, utilize all these unstructured data combined with medical knowledge, trial protocols, and patient recruitment to identify which patients and which trials match with each other. It's basically a recommender system. And already so far, more than 90% of European citizens have their electronic health records. And healthcare is desperate for large language models. But as you can imagine, this is the most sensitive data that we have. So you can't just simply build an open AI wrapper and give it to hospitals. You need to build privacy first solutions. And lucky for us, we are a cybersecurity company. And that's what we specialize at. And that's the only party that can actually utilize both. So let me tell you a little bit about our secret sauce. We have um, award-winning privacy solutions. So it's not only about the patient data and AI, it's about what unlocks the patient data. So we have proprietary technology that can run on-premise of the hospitals, anonymizes data, and I wish to tell you more and more hours about it, but we don't have time right now. But what I want you to remember is that our technology is compliant and has already um, adhered to all of the regulations. To understand what we're going to do next, I want to tell you what we have done so far. Already in the last two months since our launch, we are operational at three trial sites and have matched hundreds of patients to trials in matters of minutes. And to scale our technology, we have signed an agreement to an EHR provider of 54 hospitals, giving us access to 12 million patients' data. And our technology has unlocked thousands of DNA data sets of patients, and this technology is validated by Google and NVIDIA. And this is the all-star team that is actually capable of tackling such interdisciplinary problem. We have from AI and cybersecurity background, working at Amazon and Google, to 30 years of clinical trials and pharmaceutical experience. So if this uh, story resonates with you, we are raising our seed round. I, join, I invite you to join our mission so that we can together make personalized health accessible for everyone globally. Thank you. Let's go to that side. Thanks a lot, Nima. Jerry? Hey, Nima, thank you so much for the pitch. Very exciting vision. Um, walk us through your view how clinical trials will work in the future. Will, you, will we even rely on doing all of them? Do we get to a future where we can use synthetic data? How do you think about that? I believe the future of clinical trials is going to be more and more decentralized and data-driven and less interventional and people have to be there. And that's what we're working towards, is the future of precision medicine. 
So using not only our healthcare data, but genomic data, a lot of other biomarkers, we can actually make a um, holistic profile, uh, think of it as a digital twin of people. So a lot of the research can actually happen remotely on just data of patients. And our platform is empowering these individuals to have their whole patient history in a longitudinal manner, and they can participate in these trials in a more um, sort of uh, decentralized manner as well. Super, super exciting product and, and space. Uh, could you walk us through a little bit of how the onboarding happens? Like who in the hospital is your client? Do they have to onboard everybody? Like how does it work and, and what's that process? Definitely. So the hospitals that have a, a trial department, usually they have a principal investigator for each disease area, and there are research nurses who are right now tasked with finding patients from those databases. It's a manual task that they sit behind computers scrolling through patient data for hours, average of two hours per patient. And that's the part that we are speeding up. So the part that takes 13 months for those research nurses and for the PI to be able to answer to CROs and pharma, we speed that whole process up into matters of minutes. So they can run feasibility studies to actually see if they have the patients at the site before the trial starts. And that saves up money both for pharma and for healthcare at the same time. Thanks, uh, super strong vision. I, um, I happen to have looked at EHRs back in my investor days quite a bit, and my understanding is that quite a lot of the data is stored on-prem, um, that the data is yeah, extremely unstructured, let's say, and, and the transportability of data is quite difficult. Uh, can you please comment on two things? One is how you're dealing with that, and then the second one is you have to train your algorithms with, I guess, the metadata. Um, how do you retain that metadata and what is the kind of the ethical uh, rules that you go by? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. That's indeed one of the biggest problems of this, this uh, field. So data is on premise and it needs to remain on premise because it's a very sensitive data. And our technology specializes in running on premise as well. We de-identify all the data up to 99% F1 score precision and recall. And after that, we can extract that data. And it can come in any format. We have also dealt even with handwritten notes. Um, so we, we are capable of actually working with any type of data from PDFs to, to scans and images and lab values. And the reason that we can do that is because our technology has been already trained for the past few years. We're a cybersecurity company, and this has been sort of our specialization. And AI actually enabled us to now also build a solution on top of the, the product as well. So how we do this, we give this to the hospitals to run it at their own trial site. And then we have access to uh, basically general statistical information whereby we can see this many number of patients are there but we don't know exactly who those patients are. So that summary statistics is something that we are legally able to extract from the data. Unfortunately our time is up but thank you for the great questions, for your great answers and for the great pitch of course. Thank you. Thank you Nima. Thanks.